Now that looks spacey. M83 is also known as the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy. So it's a very, it's another gorgeous spiral galaxy, grand design spiral, but this one is visible from the Southern Hemisphere, so it's quite low declination. This is a little bit special because it's, it's, so, it's so big to look at through an eyepiece. In a reasonable size telescope, it can show you some of the spiral arms and some of this bright central core here. One of the neat things about this one is it's had six supernova explode over the last hundred years or so. So it means that these spiral arms are causing a lot of star formation to happen and then some of those big young stars are exploding as supernova. Through a bigger and bigger apertures, you can actually see some of the, the spiral arms using averted vision, just looking slightly away a little and you can see detail. So what do you it's, mean by that, averted vision? What's that? Averted vision. Well, that, that's um, where um, your eyes have the capacity to have rods and cones. Um, our eyesight is made for daylight observing. That's why we can see uh, colour in daylight. It's because of our eyes' orientation um, through the process of evolution, etc. Um, at night, our eyes aren't as good. We can see things at night when you're walking around, but it's, everything's all black and white a bit. When we look through a telescope, we're actually seeing something in a low light level, so we're not going to see a lot of colour unless it's a really large aperture. Um, in this particular case, this is taken through a, a small telescope, this particular telescope here, um, which is a refractor. So it has a very narrow um, opening, but a much bigger opening than my eyes. All the images are taken over long exposures with lots and lots of subs, building signal up, reducing noise. So each, each image um, is about 20 minutes and then I add another image to it and I'll just do one colour one night, red or one night and on another night do all green and another night all blue and then another night do luminance which is the detail layer that gives you the sharp detail so it involves what's called integration time and integration time is vital to get great images. To get the sharp detail and to make it look beautiful is technically very challenging so these red spots and the blue spots they're blue stars in close to the centre is the older stars, they're all orange giants. Massive stars are so big that they really burn through their fuel very quickly and then they supernova pretty quickly. If you're a little star, then you don't, you know, you kind of putter along, you don't really go through your fuel very quickly and you live a really, really, really long time. It's only the big massive stars and they're very young and they live very violently, very rapidly, they go through all their fuel and the biggest ones explode as supernovae. So if we've had six in the last hundred years, it's one of the most rapidly star-forming galaxies that we know of in our local universe. Charles Messier was a Frenchman, he lived in the Northern Hemisphere. All the Messier objects can be seen from the Northern Hemisphere. Do you miss out down here in the south or do you get a fair chunk of them and can you enjoy them as much as everyone else? Oh, we don't see all of them, but we see a lot of good ones directly overhead. There are a lot that we'd like to be able to see, but they're too far north for us here in the southern hemisphere, particularly at, at 35 degrees south. Um, if we were a little bit further up, say about 12 degrees, we'd see nearly all of them as well. You say southern pinwheel, why is it not just called the pinwheel? Well, there's another pinwheel in the northern hemisphere, which is apparently much more elegant to look at. And so you guys in the northern hemisphere have such a great advantage. That's another galaxy, like our galaxy, the Milky Way, that we live in. And it makes you realise how far away everything is and how small we really are in the equation. Getting ejected or puffed out more and more and more. And this will eventually result in just that sort of compact, dense collection of stars in the core of this globular cluster.